Drop me off around the corner right there. <laughs> Before becoming one of the most popular American YouTubers and personalities on the internet, well, Gamer Duke Dennis, he was born Dontavious Tony Dennis on February 26, 1994 in Greenville, South Carolina. Now, growing up with two brothers, well, Duke, he was primarily raised by a single mother and in his teenage years, well, he excelled at playing football for his high school team, even if the rest of the team, well, they really weren't all that hot. Now, Duke was a member of his school's team during his junior and senior years, and the reason he even joined the team in the first place well, it stems from an incident that happened the year prior during gym class. Now, he and his schoolmates, they were playing flag football for the first time ever, and some of the kids who were already members of the football team, well, they were all part of the festivities. But much to their surprise, Duke, he absolutely lit up the field. Now, word eventually got back to the school's football coach, who then recruited Duke relentlessly for the rest of the school year. And even though Duke's family, they couldn't afford the necessary equipment for him to play the sport, well, the coach decided to set Duke up with everything he could possibly need but remember how bad i said this team was well duke he doesn't even remember winning one single game during his first season with the team now during his next season though well duke became the hub of the offense and they actually wound up winning a game or two but it's not like duke's destiny laid in football because it definitely did not now he was apparently offered a couple scholarships from community colleges to continue on with the sport but instead of doing so well duke dennis he decided to join the military now duke he enlisted in the army straight out of high school with a friend of his in order to escape his relatively small hometown. Now, after a hellacious boot camp, well, he was stationed out in Germany where he'd spend the next four years of his life while mainly taking on a series of administrative tasks. Now, whenever he reflects on this monumental moment in his life, well, Duke considers it to be one of the worst decisions he ever made. And this epiphany, well, it hit him almost as soon as he stepped into military transport for the very first time. And I want to say that it was one of the worst experiences of my life, bro. I never go back. Living in Germany, well, Duke, he was discouraged, he was desolate, and he was alone. Now, he wound up spending most of his time in his barracks, and he absolutely hated always being told what to do. Now, desperate to get himself out of this situation, well, Duke contemplated doing something as silly as smoking weed to earn himself a discharge. But after talking with his sergeant, he decided to finish out his contract, which ended in 2017. Now, following his exit from the U.S. military, well, Duke changed his focus to something he was truly passionate about, which turns out to be gaming. Now, right before heading off to basic training, well, Duke Dennis, he joined YouTube for the first time in 2013 with the creation of his channel, Duke Dennis Gaming. He did not, however, begin posting regular content until around 2016, right before his eventual escape from the army. Now, at first, much of Duke's content involved him playing NBA 2K and putting trash talkers in their place. Now, in an unlikely turn of events, well, these first few uploads, well, they began going viral, and they occurred thousands of views each, bringing his channel to much needed attention. Now that's when Duke came up with this genius idea to create a video that combined his in-life real sport talents, not to mention sense of humor, with his video game skills. Dreaming up a video titled My Park in Real Life Part 2. With only four videos to his name at the time, well Duke, he doubled down on this idea of injecting his real life personality into the proceedings from that point forward. And he would see his channel undergo exponential growth as a result. Jumping from around five figure subscriber count to six in just one year. Now, along the way, well, Duke, he met a bunch of dudes who would quickly become some of his very best friends. I'm talking, of course, about the other members of AMP, otherwise known as Any Means Possible. Now, this is a content collection that were created in 2019 by Agent Double Zero and would come to include other members like Chris Nextdoor, Am Davis, Venuma, Kai Sennett, and Duke Dennis himself. Now, this increase in exposure, it would lead to crossover success between the collective members. And in 2020, well, Duke's YouTube channel, it would cross the mark from a little over 600,000 subs at the beginning of the year to surpass the 1 million mark by April of that year. Now, since then, Will Duke, he has only expanded his reach all the more. Now, today, he's got over 177 million views on his primary channel, and he's also branched out by creating two supplementary channels, Duke Dennis, which he founded in April of 2020, as well as Duke Dennis Live. Now, he created this the following year. Now, together, those two channels, they account for another 2 million subscribers 
numbers, as well as almost 150 million views. Now, being as focused as he is will Duke, he also has a Twitch channel with over a million followers, many of whom regularly send him donations during his lengthy live streams, whether he's gaming or simply chatting it up with his fans. And if all of that wasn't enough to keep him busy, well, he also launched his own clothing line in recent months called D Block. Now, this features specifically designed hoodies, tank tops, t-shirts, and decals from his, uh, well, his biggest supporters can wear his merch. Since crossing the 1 million mark threshold in 2020 on his primary gaming channel, well, Duke Dennis has continued to produce NBA 2K streams every few months. But the vast majority of his time is spent shooting in real life content that often winds up on his Dennis Duke Live channel. In fact, it's over on that channel where Dennis Duke, well, he's documented one of his biggest accomplishments to date by somehow managing to pull up hip hop superstar Cali. Yeah, that's right. And we recently did her before they are famous. The force is strong with this one. Now it is even possible that Duke Dennis well, he's been thirsting after Cali for so long that it just evolved into a recurring bit that his fans love to theorize about. Now, even Cali has hinted at his obsession over on social media in late 2022 by posting about how much Duke was into her. But in recent days, well, Duke, he uploaded a video to his live YouTube channel in which he finally interviews Cali one-on-one. The thing is going by the context that the, the video it provides, it sure as heck looks like these two, well, they're just meeting for the very first time. Now, in the title of that video, well, Duke, he is capitalized on the perceived notion that these two have been dating by referring to Callie as his ex. Now, again, whether that this is just like a, a game or something, well, whatever way they're doing it, it's getting Duke a lot of clicks. But there are also videos of the two of them circulating on TikToks from the middle of 2022, which makes pinning down the timeline of the relationship, well, about as hard as solving a Rubik's Cube. I can't really figure out what's going on. Now, if all of this is just for clout, well, I honestly can't do anything but give Duke props because his gamble has certainly paid off. Now, in just three days, the video he uploaded alongside Callie, well, it's already earned over 1 million views, which is more than double what the majority of his other uploads have pulled in during the past month. Now, surprised to find out that Duke Dennis might be exaggerating his relationship with a hip-hop superstar, well, that probably won't surprise you as much as the next part, because while I was researching Duke's life, well, I discovered this tale from just after his military days. It turns out that once he was a free man, well, Duke, he moved back in with his mother, but because of an associate she had made around the same time, well, the family was forced to flee a trailer park to avoid being targeted by some ruthless individuals. That's right. Now, this is important to note because with only two bedrooms in the trailer, well, Duke, he used to have to use his original gaming setup for his YouTube channel in his brother's room, who would more often than not, well, he would wind up sleeping on the couch. Now, during this period of time in Duke's life, well, his YouTube channel blew up, and do you want to know what he spent his first $4,000 YouTube check on? Well, he spent it on his family. Taking care of his brother and his mother before himself just goes to show you that from the very beginning, well, Duke Dennis, he had his priorities straight, which at the end of the day, well, is probably why he's as successful as he is today as one of YouTube's most popular content creators. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up this episode of Before They Are Famous, but I do have a question for you guys. What's the biggest mistake you made as a young adult which you wish you could go back and change today? You let me know yours in the comments down below, and uh, we like to tag on a previous upload to the end of our new uploads so i guess it's kai sent it for this one i know he reacted to the thumbnail enjoy it i'll see you guys in another video Before becoming one of the most talked about female rappers on the planet thanks to hit songs like Wet and Area Codes, well, up and coming female MC Callie was born Kalia Ashley Ross on July 29, 2000, in Roswell, Georgia. For the most part, Callie was raised by her Panamanian mother on the north side of Atlanta, along with the help of her maternal grandmother. In fact, both of these women, they would play a huge part in shaping the person Callie would become. Now, her mother taught her the importance of hard work while her grandma, well, she pushed her to believe in herself at all times. But it was Callie's stepfather who somewhat inadvertently, well, he turned her into a performer. Now, a little over a decade ago when Callie was still in the fifth grade, well, she was chronicling her feelings daily in a journal as she went through the trials and tribulations of impending adolescence. Back then, her stepfather, he was dabbling as a producer in the music industry and he'd set up a recording studio in the home spare bedroom so he could make some beats. Now, with only three bedrooms in the house, well, that meant that Callie, she had to share a room with her brother, something she desperately wanted to stop doing the older she got. So she and her stepdad, well, they struck a deal. If she wrote 13 songs all on her own, well, she could have her own bedroom. 
Less than a month later, well, Callie, she had finished writing every single track and then recorded the songs with her stepdad's help. Now, that's how she officially became a 12-year-old rapper and the sole owner of her very own bedroom. Now, influenced from the beginning by artists like Nicki Minaj and Aaliyah, well, Callie knew how she wanted to present herself to the world as a girl with a bag full of swag, which is what gave her the confidence to then package six of those 13 songs into a mixtape and distribute them to barbershops all around her hometown while dropping a few DIY music videos as well. She even handed copies of her project out to her soccer team. But once she firmly entered her teenage years, well, she kind of lost track of music for a minute as she focused more on athletics as well as earning some disposable income while working at Chipotle. Yeah, listen, it worked for Machine Gun Kelly. No shame in that, right? Now, after a month in the fast food industry, well, Callie picked up work at a top golf entertainment venue before considering joining the Air Force. Now, instead of doing that, however, well, Callie, she ended up working at a senior living facility beside her mom, and during the short amount of time she could steal with her breaks, well, she'd write a few new rhymes and share them with her mother. Now, that's when Callie's mom, she came up with an idea that would change her daughter's life forever. In 2018, Callie's mom, she found out that Netflix it was holding auditions in Atlanta for their upcoming music competition series, Rhythm and Flow, and convinced her daughter to throw her hat into the ring. Now, unfortunately, well, Callie, she only made it to the second round of auditions before her opportunity was cut short because the judges of Killer Mike, Quavo, and Big Boy, well, they were all too tired to continue listening to the final six auditions. Now, she was supposed to receive a callback afterwards, but, uh, well, she never did. Now, at that point, well, Callie, she could have given up on her dream completely. In fact, she considered it. But then another contestant from the series, Houston-based rapper Ken the Man, well, he encouraged her not to give up and to keep pushing forward. Now, this support, it led to Callie creating the first viral track of her career, a single titled Miami. But it still wasn't smooth sailing for Callie quite yet. Now, clearance issues, they plagued not only Mammy, but her first mixtapes as well, after she refused the advances of a producer who had helped her early on in her career. She told the podcast, Go Off Sis, where she stated, Men cannot handle rejection, especially in the industry. When you're a pretty woman, he got all my music taken down and filed a cease and desist. It was just weird. Yeah, people with them them copyright strikes and those takedown notices, man. People are gangst out there. Now, this understandably resulted in Callie once again growing frustrated with the process of making music. Now, that's when her manager stepped in, or should I say momager. Turns out Callie's manager is actually the mother of her best friend. So these two, they have a deep connection that goes beyond music and business. Now, Callie, she once told Hip Hop DX, she's my best friend's mom and is the person who was like, you know what? We are gonna do this thing. I'm gonna make sure your business is handled. I'll make sure nobody play with you and we're gonna take over. Now, in this case, well, Callie's manager had to protect her from herself by promising she'd keep an eye on any subsequent sampling issues that might arise. Callie threw herself into the recording process once again, and that very day, well, she created the song that would become her breakthrough. We're talking a track titled Do a Bitch. Knowing she had something special on her hands, well, Callie, she held onto that track for seven months, waiting for the right time to release it, before finally posting a snippet on TikTok for the first time in November of 2020. That same year, well, Callie, she signed her first big deal with Atlantic Records, and over the course of the next 12 months, we'll do a bitch, it would earn over 12 million streams on Spotify between the original version as well as its three remixes, one of which features Rico Nasty. Now, Callie, she almost didn't write the song that would change her life because the subject matter involving her ex was still quite fresh when she sat down to pen it. Now, thankfully, well, her best friend recognized the potential in the track and convinced her to release it. Now, before she knew what was happening, well, the song was blowing up over on TikTok as well, where big-time content creators like Charlie DiBellio, Gabrielle Union, and Nessa Barrett, well, they were all getting in on the fun by dreaming up their own dance moves to the beat. With her name circulating more than ever, well, a couple months later, Callie dropped her debut EP, This Why They Mad Now, a title no one can knock. That's great. Now, of course, achieving a breakthrough isn't always as difficult as maintaining a presence. Now, thankfully, Callie, she was able to cement her position as one of hip hop's most promising when she dropped mm -mm in November of 2021. That's MMM space MMM. Kind of like my initials, but mm -mm, right? 
Produced by superstar ATL Jacob, will the new song prove to be just as popular across digital streaming services and TikTok as her former hit, and it wound up producing remixes from the likes of Lotto and Moneybag Yo. After collaborating together on that track, Lotto brought Kali on tour, which propelled the young star's fame to new heights and set the stage for the next step in her career. In 2022, when Kali dropped her sophomore EP titled Toxic Chocolate, comprised of eight songs, including Mmm Mmm, and this project had featured collaborations alongside Bia, Young Blue, and Money Long. Now, while propelling Callie towards the biggest honor of her career so far, being named to the XXL freshman class of 2022. Joined by the likes of Nardo Wick and Don't Shy, will this recognition prove that Callie, she had finally accomplished what she has been chasing for so long, a place of merit in the hip hop food chain. Hot on the heels of that accolade, will Callie, she kept the good vibes going with the release of Wet. Now that's a sexy summer anthem with an addictive flow and a catchy beat. I think that's the one I heard on the radio that I'm like, we better make a video on this girl. She's blowing up. But even that spicy single, it wasn't quite as successful as what came next when Callie scored her first appearance on the Billboard Hot 100 thanks to Area Coats. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Now, this is an interpretation of Ludacris' 2001 hit of the same name. Area Codes launched at the number 54 spot, and it was the highest new entry on the chart that week. What's more, the track, it also inspired more viral activity on TikTok when Callie's ex-streamer, Duke Dennis, well, he reacted to the video. Now, Duke's complicated and emotional response to that song has inspired a series of viral memes on TikTok, and it just goes to show you that no matter what Callie's working on at any given time, well, odds are pretty good once she drops a new song, it's going to go viral in some way, shape, or form. Now, will this formula hold true for her next hit? Well, I guess we'll have to just wait and see. After all, this has been Before They're Famous. And before I leave you guys, I do have a question for you. Would you consider letting a best friend's parent control your business affairs? I mean, momagers worked out for the Kardashians. In hip-hop, I feel like, you know, having a, a, a parent that's in the business is quite frequent. You know, a lot of people have, like, tried, failed, but they know the biz. So then they become managers. But then you're getting your family mixed in with your finances. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below.